For today's lesson, uh, this is the sixth lesson in simple harmonic motion topic. Uh, we're gonna look at small angle approximation for a pendulum. This is really important because uh, a couple lessons back, you may have remembered that we said that the period and amplitude of an oscillator are independent of each other. Uh, and that doesn't always work for a pendulum, so we're gonna look at when we can actually use uh, that approximation for a uh, pendulum behaving as a simple harmonic oscillator. There are a couple things you can look at in the textbook for this, uh, and a practice problem on page 349. Uh, but let's get right into the lesson. So one of the things that's pretty key for a pendulum uh, is actually treating it in a lot of times like it's a circle uh, or treating it as if it's moving in a circular path. So if that's not obvious to you, we can draw a circle over top of this and you can see that the path the pendulum takes is really just kind of an arc of an entire circle. If you put the, the point where it's oscillating from or the, the point where it's attached to at the center of the circle, it uh, follows a nice circular path. So we're going to use that idea in a few, few points throughout this. So when we're looking at this, I uh, usually say that the length of the string is something like L. So we'll call that lowercase L. And when it's displaced, we're bringing it over some theta or some angle from the equilibrium position uh, when it's just hanging straight down. Uh, and again, that's equilibrium in terms of the oscillation. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's fully at equilibrium if it's swinging because something can't be in equilibrium if it's in uh, circular motion. So again, the equilibrium just refers to the oscillation, not the actual full motion of the object. And as it's going, we just say that it can go back and forth by either some uh, negative x or positive x. And it's always measured from, again, from the center. So if you think back to what you may have learned in math about, I mentioned this is an arc length, uh, sometimes we've used the word or the letter S for displacement, so I might call this displacement S. And as you'd look in math, we'd say that the arc length is theta times R. Now, if we use some of the variables that we're dealing with this topic, uh, the displacement we're calling that X. We still have theta, but the radius is you could tell from the circle that I drew before is just the length of the pendulum. And so that's going to be pretty useful in one of the next steps that we do. Uh, I'm also going to rearrange that while we're here, and I'm going to define it in terms of the angle. Uh, theta is x over l. And again, that'll be useful when we start looking over at this other part of the diagram, because what's really important about simple harmonic motion is the, uh, the restoring force and the acceleration, and whether those are proportional or not to the displacement from equilibrium. Now, and the diagram on the right, I want to use that one to draw a free body diagram. Let's assume this is over all the way at the maxima. And if I drew uh, the forces acting on it, we would have just two. We would have the weight, or the force due to gravity, and we'd also have the tension. Now in this case, the tension does actually happen to be smaller than gravity, uh, because we almost treat this like it's an incline. Uh, we can imagine that it's being pulled back towards its equilibrium position down here. And so it's actually easier to split up that force of gravity almost into like a parallel and perpendicular component. Again, similar to what we did with inclines. Um, and so I'm gonna say that those are still parallel and perpendicular, but parallel to the direction of motion and then perpendicular to the direction of motion or to the tangent. Uh, and just like we did with circular motion, the, the velocity that's going to move is tangent. Now, if it's at the maximum, its velocity is instantaneously zero, but it is accelerating the most out at the maximum. So uh, it's going to be coming back soon. So if we look at this, uh, the pendulum is obviously not moving up towards the point where it's suspended or away from that. So the tension and the perpendicular force are going to balance out each other. So really, we're just left with this parallel force that in this case is our net force. And since it's bringing it back to the equilibrium, we're gonna call that the restoring force because it is gonna be helping us return toward this equilibrium position. And we should notice that as we get closer to the equilibrium, that parallel component is gonna be smaller and smaller because there should be no restoring force at the center. And so, if we take that and start applying uh, Newton's second law, so we're going to look at F net equals MA. And we're going to say that the net force, like we just mentioned, was just F parallel.
Now we can think about the trig here. Uh, this is the same angle theta. You can tell that from the diagram. Now that's going to make the f parallel just like it was with inclines. So this is going to be equal to fg sine of theta. Or we might simplify that to mg sine theta. So I'm going to put that down in the equation instead of f parallel. I'm going to call this mg sine theta equals ma. As we get to that point, we're going to notice we can cancel out the m's. And let's start simplifying a little bit more. We just go g sine theta is equal to our acceleration. Now, again, that's an acceleration that's restoring. Uh, we can s use this component over here that I mentioned. I wanted to use it and plug into theta so that we're dealing more with the terms that we're given. So we've got g sine parentheses x over l is equal to our acceleration. Now, one thing you might notice about this is if we're talking about simple harmonic motion, we know that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement of equilibrium. Now, this doesn't really show that. It shows that the acceleration is proportional to the sine of the angle. And that's really not what we're looking for. We need it to be proportional uh, in order to follow simple harmonic motion. So let's get rid of those highlights. And we would just say that you know this doesn't really work. We don't want the acceleration uh, to be proportional to the sine of theta, so that doesn't really work. And we would say that this is not simple harmonic. So the question is that what do we have to do about that, or when will this work? And so one of the things that's actually pretty important to look at is if we start bringing in uh, a look at that sine of the angle. And so I have this diagram over here. I did a quick rundown of some angles and converted them to radians because everything we're working on is in radians, and then taking the sine of those angles. So what you should notice is that, I mean, obviously sine of zero is just zero. So it doesn't matter if we're in radians or degrees, that's the same. Uh, but the sine of one degree, which in radians is 0.0175. I mean, it's a little bit rounded, obviously, and most of these are, uh, is that it's actually just the same number. Uh, it's, you have to go out quite a few decimal places to get them to be any different. And if you notice, that's actually pretty much the same in terms of the angle and the sine of the angle. They're very close all the way down to like 10 degrees. And if we notice after that, they're still pretty close, but they start diverging more and more as we get further and further away from uh, a zero degree. So at zero degrees, the sine is just the same as the angle. Uh, it's pretty close from one to 10 degrees. And then that's where we kind of make our cutoff. And we say that this is the small angle approximation, which is where the sine of the angle is about equal to the angle itself. And so that helps us because it's not really mathematically correct, but we can say that it's close enough to just actually ignore this sine part. Uh, as long as we're using the small angle approximation. So only for angles less than 10 degrees can we say that it's just g times x over l being equal to the acceleration. Now, one thing that actually should be mentioned here uh, is that the direction of this force we never really brought up, and I didn't want to give too many things all at once. But notice that the direction of this force is uh, really kind of back towards the equilibrium. Uh, so it really is an opposite to the displacement. And what we really should have said then up here is that it's a negative f parallel, making this negative, and this is negative, and this is negative. And that's where this. Uh, acceleration being proportional to the negative displacement comes from. And we actually do see that once we get rid of that sign. Uh, we can say that the acceleration is related to the uh, displacement from equilibrium. It's proportional, and it's in the opposite direction. And that's really what we were looking for, and that's our defining relationship for simple harmonic motion. Now, we can simplify this a little bit more. 
uh, we could say that the acceleration is just negative gx over l, and that's fine. Um, it's not totally necessary, but it does help to see that that is a proportional thing, and again, really what we're looking for. And so now it's simple harmonic, and we can be happy. So the next step is we use the small angle approximation to, yes, show that it's simple harmonic, but we do want to keep going from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and keep going because we need an equation for the period of a pendulum. You'll see that on your reference table, and uh, I just want to show where that comes from. So I'm fine with what's on the left, so let's keep that. Negative g times x over l is equal to... And now we also have an equation for the acceleration, uh, which is also in your reference table. And that's negative omega squared x. And that's going to let us simplify a little bit. So we're going to get rid of that x. We can also now get rid of that negative sign that I brought in. And we can be left with g over l equals omega squared. This is actually really similar to the omega squared is equal to k over m for a spring oscillator. So I'd actually suggest add this to your reference table. And it might even do that right next to the period of a uh, pendulum formula this time, just like you did for the period of a spring formula uh, last time. And so definitely worth knowing. There are a couple more steps we can actually do to get to the period part. So if we plug in, we know omega is 2 pi over t. Uh, that's going to be squared. It's equal to g over l. And I'm not so worried about the rearranging part. You can go ahead and do some fun math on your own. And then you're going to rearrange, and you're going to get period equals 2 pi radical l over g. And that is our period for a pendulum formula. And again, because of that estimation we did before, this only really works for angles less than 10 degrees.